Hey, this is Amy with Flower Moxie, and we're gonna be talking ceremony urns today, which are one of my favorite things to build. A lot of people find it intimidating, but they shouldn't be. So what I have here are two design urns, and if you're going the um, eco-friendly route, which is chicken wire, I would say you have this deep urn, and I would say create a false bottom because if you're just using chicken wire when you're putting those stems in it will go too far down and of course the other method is foam so I have like some Tupperware you can you know just find an old bowl to put down in there so that way when I'm driving the stem in it doesn't go in deeper than what I want it to and you want to always tape it down um, we did a styled shoot yesterday and I was in a completely foul mood at the beginning because I didn't tape it down and when I was carrying it in, the wind um, blew it out of my arms. It pulled the flowers out. I still had the urn and it crushed uh, my roses, which are why we are doing uh, a different color than what I thought today. So always make sure that you tape it down. You can probably, just to be thorough, throw another piece of tape over the top. But we're gonna be working with foam today. Uh, because I don't have as long of stems as what I thought because of what happened yesterday so I'm over it obviously <laughs> so we're gonna be working with foam and I like it to be really tight so what I do is I lay my foam on top of it and I press down slightly and see how it made the marks for me at that point and I'll do it here you take your dullest knife and you just cut where those score marks are. And I'm gonna press this down, and I like a little bit to come over the top, maybe not that much. and then you will fill your urn up with water. And we're gonna tape it, because we know what happens when you don't tape things. Okay, so I'm gonna be designing, and this is about an eight to nine inch uh, designer urn that we're now selling, it's plastic. It was copper and I decided I wanted gold for the tutorial, so I sprayed it out with some uh, Brilliant Gold Design Master. And just to give you um, a side by side, this is a true metal, gold urn and I think that that design master it sprays out really nice if that's a little bit too bright for you you can always go with the antique gold which is a little bit darker and deeper so urns can always seem intimidating but the easiest way to get started is just to set your parameters so I'm gonna come in here and decide how high I want it based on what we just talked about and I'm gonna set my margins and then I'm gonna start to build So for ceremony urns, I typically build them a bit more one-sided. That doesn't mean it's gonna be completely flat and back unless it's going up against a wall. So you really need to think of where your urn's going to be. And then a side note, an urn, like a big floral arrangement for a ceremony, needs to be within this area of your body. So if your venue doesn't have a stand or like a wine barrel or a wall for flowers, then you need to rent like an acrylic stand, some pillars, some to get that urn off the ground because if you have those flowers on the ground it's not going to really show up in your pictures and it's not going to be extremely impressive so I'm getting started with leather leaf I love this greenery because it's so dense and I find that I can do so much with it a lot of people love eucalyptus um, and if you're going for more of a sagey green that's fine but you still want to start with a very dense greenery because as you can see, see how thin this is? I can't get good coverage with this. So first what I'm doing is I'm trying to like set a foundation and get it really thick. That way light can't travel through it and I need to just create some denseness. So I'm gonna start with a less expensive green like leather leaf and then we'll come back and fill in with some sexier greeneries like the eucalyptus, olive branch, things like that. So first I'm fanning things out. And see, I've stuck with my parameters. 
and now I'm gonna have it come towards me. So we wanna think of this as like a beach ball, okay? So we don't just want it one-sided. So now I'm starting to angle it a little, a little bit more. So you can see how foam, it's a little bit more user-friendly, especially for a beginner. Um, you can really get that placement exactly where you want it. Some of these pieces are kind of ratty because I'm pulling this out of the arrangement I dropped yesterday, as you very well remember. But that's okay because this isn't going to be really seen. I'm just creating that foundation. And so also, a lot of people will build something beautiful here and then they forget about the bottom. And so that's why I have my foam a little bit higher than the lip of my vessel is because I wanna drive the greenery in and cover those mechanics. So when it's at eye level, I don't wanna see a gap. I want it kind of overflowing and spilling out. It's also nice like to forage. But I do wanna urge you anytime you're foraging, know what you're foraging. <laughs> so we all have Google Lens, so use it. Don't go into some like creek bed or don't cut anything that's growing on the side of an old barn because you may not know what that is and I don't want you getting into poison sumac like I did. But. It was a long time ago. So I'm getting good coverage. Still have plenty of holes to backfill with my flowers. I always like to start with one product and switch to another. That's how I like to do it personally. So here's some lemon leaf. And now we're gonna continue with this. This isn't necessarily the prettiest greenery, but it's very, very hardy. Sometimes it can be a little bit bug nibbled. Um, but again, I'm just going for some really good coverage. So now I have it uh, greened out with maybe a lesser expensive greens and I can come back with the, with the items that are a little bit more sparse, a little bit more pricey. And you can see I'm still sticking with the parameters that I had. And I keep going until um, I allow some holes, but I want it to be pretty filled out. I want to be able to step away and say that's a, that's a pretty greenery only arrangement.
Okay, this is at a pretty good point for me, and I do wanna say, see how the back is flat and we can see all the mechanics? I'm fine with that for now, unless I'm putting it up against a wall like at a Greek or Catholic church where they have like specific places for flowers. I'm gonna come and fill this out. But see when I turn this to the side, how we kind of have that beach ball thing happening? So I'm gonna put my flowers obviously in front, and in the very end, I'm gonna fill this out just if the photographer, videographer gets a weird angle, I don't want some weird like flat back that looks terrible. Also, the flowers that you use, you're probably gonna use hardier things. Um, mums, cushion flowers, roses, carnations, snapdragons. What you won't use is really delicate, pricey items, uh, mainly because they won't be seen as much and they're expensive, but the biggest reason is they typically have shorter stems, so they're not going to be able to go the length and they probably won't show up in your photos. So let's get going. Okay, we're starting with some Freedom Roses. Um, and you can build this one to two days in advance, um, especially green it out maybe in advance, but wait for your roses to completely blow open. And these have been out for three or four days, so they're really blown and that's how I like them. And just remember to have plenty of water in your vessel. Don't let it dry out because although foam is nice and hydrating, it doesn't provide enough water. So now we're just backfilling with our flowers and it's, you can see it's not overly complicated. It's not anything that you should be intimidated by. People feel like, or a lot of uh, clients feel like if it's larger, then that makes it harder, which to me isn't true just because if it's like large and in charge, I just feel like I can't really screw it up because you just keep adding more flowers. I typically like to start with one type of flower and disperse it. I'm building this in a very much more traditional way. And I'm pretty keen on letting the flowers not sink too deeply into my uh, foam. Like I want them to kind of be coming out a little bit further than the greenery. Always keep the flowers on different planes. So not all of the flowers need to face the audience. They can be off to the side. What you want to avoid is doing something like this on the same plane uh, because that can look like two nipples. So just turn them off to the side, change up the planes, sink something down. And remember to give the bottom um, some attention. Like, that's why we left a lip, is that way we can kind of point things down like this. Now I'm gonna come back in with my burgundy carnations. Anytime you have a closed carnation, you can open that up with your thumb. You can be a little bit rougher with it, much rougher than like a rose. But that's about the only flower that you're allowed to <laughs> manhandle. Other flowers will hate you. So see how I'm getting so much more from my money with this little rose? When we reflex it, and some people don't like this, and that's okay, like, everyone has their preferences, but I, I love a good reflex rose. I just, it just triples the size, and I think it makes it look a little bit unusual. But you can only do this on old roses, so don't try to do this right out of the box because they'll split on you. Old roses are my favorite. Okay. 
Okay, we're gonna come back in with some, with some pinks. These are pink expressions, which are my very new favorite rose. So it looks absolutely like a garden rose and it isn't. It's a standard rose, but it blows out like a garden rose. Like to me, this looks exactly like a Juliet, just a little bit different shade. But I've gotten them before and they're kind of a, sometimes a little bit hot pink. This one came in a little bit more toned down, so I, I'm gonna order them a few more times before I put them on the website, just so I can know what their tendencies are. So see how I have some space? I'm trying not to let things like touch. I always want some breathing room. Um, I, want, I don't necessarily want a hole, um, but I, I don't want it to be so compact that the flowers, you can't appreciate them just because they're, there's like too, too many clustered together. I'm starting to run out of real estate a little bit with the, with the film. So that tells me I'm almost finished. Because if you leave it up to me, like I just keep adding flowers. I tend to always recut my flowers, especially when I'm inserting them into foam. Over time, um, the end of the stem will oxidize, so I want it to—I want to give it all its chance that it can to be able to drink within the foam. Foam isn't a natural product, and flowers will tolerate it. Hydrangeas don't love it, so hydrangeas work with these, and it's also really nice when you're doing large arrangements but you definitely have to have water in the vessel. Sometimes I have had clients email and they're like, my hydrangeas have wilted. And I, I ask them, like, do you have any water in that vase? And they're like, no, <laughs> that's why. Um, hydrangeas will be very rebellious if they don't have an excessive amount of hydration. All right, I'm liking where it's at. Like I filled out the sides. I think I can use some things down here. Let's see if I have, ooh, I already have one that's nice and reflexed. Be conservative when you're cutting. It's like bangs, you can always cut more but when a stem is too short, it's like max sadness. <laughs> It'll have to be repurposed some other place. So I like the shape that it's taking. Can probably twist and dry that guy in a little bit tighter. And let me do that on, my, on this side, and then I will show you um, how we're just gonna fill out the back. So at this point, I'll obviously get back, see how I like it from a distance. I'm also going to lean down and see what it's gonna look like if I was sitting um, as a member of the audience, how it looks at eye level. Because when I was a new florist, I would just focus up here, and then when I would sit down, I would see that I had that big gap. But we're not gonna do that because we started by greening out from the beginning. So now let's clean up our back a little bit and I'm just gonna come in haphazardly fill this up. So now I'm gonna start turning the greenery around. If I was just doing this, we would get more of the same, but I'm going to turn it around and I'm gonna cover up my mechanics and fill this out in the same way so it has that nice, pretty beach ball shape.
So we are done. That probably took me about 20 minutes. Again, you can green this out two to three days in advance. Leave plenty of water in your design urn. I would wait until your rose is open to backfill with those guys. We've finished out the back so we don't have that like weirdness, not flat back. So we didn't put um, flowers back here because they won't want to be they won't be seen. So we don't want to waste our money unless we need something that's like 360. Um, after the ceremony, I suggest to move these inside and use them maybe on your food table, your cake table. If you have a sweetheart table, you can place this urn in front and kind of uh, put it off to the side. And um, this, the design urn is seven to nine inches is where you wanna stay at. And this is our plastic resin urn. So it's, uh, I think around, what, 12 to $15 in urn, so very, very affordable. It takes paint really well, so you can paint it out any color that you want. Thank you so much.